Discipline definitely is key in every aspect of life. Same thing with business. You can't expect to do the same thing as somebody else and get the result you want. How do you want your life to look like, your body to look like, and your business to look like? You're not DQ'd. Why? Because you went up there and punched somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another fire episode of the Winners Club Podcast, where even when we don't win, we learn, and learning is a form of winning. And we have a real special guest today, but before I introduce her, I want you guys to just do me a big favor. Share this with five people who need to know and learn more about business, life, and how to better yourself. And if you don't know my name, my name is Brian Tran, the host. And I got my host over there, my co-host, PJ yo, yo, what's up, guys? Hey, welcome back, Brian. And we have a real special guest. I, I, you know, I wanted to bring her on for a long time, but PJ wasn't so comfortable <laughs> because he goes, no, don't bring my girlfriend on the show. <laughs> oh. Don't ask that, hard but. questions and make me look bad. And I said, PJ, suck it up. We got to bring your girl on the show because she has a lot to teach us. We have none other than a bodybuilder, a businesswoman, conqueror of the world. And it's nice to bring on a female mind to show you guys how to dominate business and life. Please introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I am Christiana Torregosa. And wow, that was uh, quite the intro. I appreciate the conqueror of the world. That's a, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's going to be a good one to put on my resume. Let's go. You know, who runs the world? Who runs the world? Girls. <laughs> we're just, we're just, you know, we're men, but we're just in a woman's world, you know, we're just wandering around. But I brought you on the show today because you have a very interesting story. And I found that the best business women are ones that have, uh, that are bodybuilders or in the army or, or Navy. You know what I mean? Because you guys have this one thing that most people lack. Do you want to guess what that is, PJ? Um, it's not chocolates. Yeah, that's what I know. I know all about that. I don't know. I don't know. What What do you think it is, Christiana? <sighs> I mean, if you were to guess, of... if you were to guess, if anything, what is that one thing that you think propels other people in business? I'd say discipline. You know? Bingo. Bingo, yeah. guys. You already know it. You already know it. For sure. For Without sure. Without discipline, it's very hard to make it very far. Definitely. What's your thoughts on uh, discipline, Christiana? It's key. You know, um, it's funny that you mentioned like bodybuilders. You mentioned military. I actually grew up in a military household. Oh, dang. I didn't even know that. So, yeah, yeah. My dad's in the military. And, um, you know, I I know the way that I am today is some things I need to unlearn. Discipline's a great thing. But then there's certain parts where it's like I need to be cool a little bit, like chill out. But discipline definitely is key in every aspect of life, whether it's having discipline for yourself, having discipline with your career and just managing even just day to day with like people that you need to collaborate with. You know, if you don't have that discipline to stick to what you say you're going to do, you can go off track, off the rails, like instant. I want to dive deeper into that. But before I do, why don't you introduce yourself and, you know, how did you get into bodybuilding? I mean, that's not, uh, that's not, I mean, it's one of the hardest sports, I would say. Definitely. Right? I mean, it's, it's, it's a different thing. Like bodybuilding and going to the gym is completely different. You know, there's people who just, just want to do it and stay healthy, but bodybuilding is another extreme because, you know, it's literally like building muscle and then getting shredded and then not eating this, not eating that. Um, but I'll let her tell like more of the story. So yeah, please, please let us know your story and your upbringing, how that, uh, kind of came to fault. Well, yeah, absolutely. So bodybuilding. So before bodybuilding, you know, I was just on the track of definitely just going to the gym here and there. And then I got into powerlifting and I really love that too. Um, but for bodybuilding specifically, I've always been so intrigued by it. And, and like, I almost felt like I couldn't do it too because yeah. of the discipline that they have to put into it and specifically the diet. Yeah. Because you can send me to the gym for two hours a day. You can send me there and I'll be like solid. Yep. Like I love working out. But when it comes to prep and when it comes to having to be disciplined with like your diet and, and, and really being regimented to with going to the gym at a certain time, going, waking up, going to sleep, managing your schedule with work. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a lot. 
It's a job in its own. It's honestly a job. So why, do you, why do you do it? If it's, it sounds miserable, why do you do it? I love it. Yeah. And specifically, so when I got into it, uh, I'll be totally transparent here. I got into it because I just want to see my body change. You know, yeah. as a power lifter, it was great. I was strong. But your girl's always been thick. And um, I love it. You know, being thick's great. But... DJ, do you I, like it thick? 100%. <laughs> I was just about to say. I, I mean, it, it's good that you like the both yeah. that you guys both like it thick. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to are you, are you trying to say that it's like mutual? I, you know, like mutual, what if like, you don't like it thick, PJ? I don't know. Bro, I'm shredded right now. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're okay, saying. Yeah, right. For all the, uh, for the audio listeners, I'm shredded right now. <laughs> believe me. <laughs> okay. But oh. let, let, let's dive into more. And, you know, did you start working out? Why did you start working out? Because obviously mm. before you do bodybuilding mm. you have to work out like what really made you go into that because i do know your story and i think it's a good one to hear so got into my fitness journey specifically just from the beginning yeah go ahead and share yeah your fitness journey like why did you start working out so actually i started really young um i was overweight growing up like when i say overweight i told you my dad was in the military yeah. he came back from iraq and i gained i i weighed more than my dad Holy and i smoke. was <laughs> Sorry. So, it's just an amazing story, though. Sorry. <laughs> Let me hear. Was your dad, like, small? He was, I mean, he was in Iraq fighting the war, right? Like, okay. they're not eating, like. Yeah, yeah. Still a grown you know? man, though, it's, you know? it's a, I, yeah. yeah. I weigh, weighed more than a, yeah. Like How old were you at this time? I was nine going on ten. Damn. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Because <laughs> yeah. Shout out. I'm going to just say that reaction. Yeah. I live for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. You know? okay. Yeah. What's, what's How tall is your dad? 5'2? Five, five, he's, uh, nah. no, he's 5'5. Five, five. <laughs> okay, all right. So, you know, that's still okay. All right. You know, so. Got to give context five, to our, our listeners out there. Yeah. So, you know, and the great thing about it, though, like, it, I did start at a young age. My parents got me into working out teaching me how to diet yeah um and then when i got to like high school and everything like that like it was so so um and then going into college uh, i'd say like more around like my junior year is where i started getting more into like lifting mm -hmm. and then also like i'm not gonna lie to all my girls out there i know all my women we started at as cardio bunnies because yeah. we have all of these stigmas of getting big and everything right um, but yeah, it was definitely like something that had stuck with me for a long time, um, with my fitness journey, uh, with really trying to stay fit and stay in shape. But I will say like, there was a lot of things I had to unlearn, you know, with like my fitness journey, especially in the beginning, because it was like, you eat this and you're going to look good or you're gonna, I, I went through this little phase where. I was like, if I don't eat at all, like, I'm not saying I was like, you know, I don't want to do anything trigger, but I was definitely at a place where I didn't know what the right way that would work for me right. in my diet. You know what I mean? Towards my goals or anything. I didn't really have goals to in my fitness goals other mm -hmm. than losing weight, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because yeah. I'm going to tie back to business. Yeah. There, like with fitness training and bodybuilding, there is no, like, there's not one right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It all depends on what you want your business to look like or your body to look exactly. like. Exactly. You want big legs and a big butt? You better do something else. You want, you know, Johnny Bravo like me, kind of big and slim at the bottom? Yeah. It's, a, it's a different workout, right? Same thing with business. Yeah. yeah. You can't expect to do the same thing as somebody else and get the result you want. Exactly. Yeah. But it starts with understanding what it, what is it that you want? Yeah. How do you want your life to look like, your body to look like, and your business to look like? Yeah. I think like also what I what I could pull back from that is from what you're saying is back to business. It's the idea of trying to do like everything right. You're like because there's so many diets out there, right? Yeah, there's so many diets out there. There's like keto. There's freaking hard carb, low carb, blah blah blah, blah whatever you know. And in business, there's so many business opportunities, right? There's like oh, should I be like an Amazon FBA? Should I be a creative? Should I be in real estate? Right. And I think if you never give the time, because all of these will work, right? They will. But if you're someone who's not willing to give the time and give the dedication to just one avenue, you're never going to make it in anywhere. That's you right. Know? Like, nothing's ever going to work. It's like, oh, well, I'm going to try keto for a week, and then I'm going to try this next week. You're not going to get the results. Just the same thing as business, you know? So yeah. kudos to you for, you know, finding that uh, secret sauce. Thanks, thanks. 
So how did you get so big? Is it because of Filipino foods? Like a lot of fried food? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know. Filipinos like, don't have a lot of vegetables. It was, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it was not, yeah. Like, it was not. You look back on it. But I ate good. Oh, yeah. Clearly. Yeah, yeah, clearly yeah, yeah. I ate clearly. good. Was it like, more out of, like, was it, like, comfort? Or was that, like, your form of, like. I just didn't know better. Yeah. You know? And I think I mean, that. But you're nine, ten years old. You don't know better. Exactly, yeah. right? And, uh, you know, um, my mom was busy. She was, you know, um, I hold down the house yeah, by herself house. while your dad exactly. was gone. Yeah, exactly. So it was a lot. Right. And I'm just grateful that at the time that I was having my parents really step in and be like, you know, cause my dad was real. He was like, all right. Like I will never forget that day. What'd he say? I will never forget that day. Cause when I stepped on the scale, uh, the scale, he weighed himself first. Right. And then I weighed myself after. And I was just like, this thing's broken. <laughs> <laughs> I had a big lunch. Yeah. <laughs> a couple pizza pockets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. you know, but, it, was, it was real. Like, you know, I think also, too, you know, I think the greatest part of going through tough times, you know, at earlier stages, you know, when you know, but be- don't know any better. Right. And like the world's just there's a lot of hate in it when you're a young kid. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that built probably a lot of character in you, a lot of grit. And I think you know, you probably would never take that that back, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, explain to the audience, because mm-hmm. you could have took it two ways. Mm-hmm. What went through your mind at that moment? I I just remember being like, like damn, like, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, because it's a grown man. Yeah. And, but at the same time, when I was like nine or 10, I, I really didn't know. That's fair. Right? Where yeah. I was like, and I never weighed myself. Sure. That was like probably the first time that I've actually weighed myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that I look at it, because I was never, you know, I, I, I take that back actually, because I know that in school it was already, it was they, hard. There yeah. Was they some, weigh you and then like, yeah, they make you run a mile and oh, they, yeah. they grade yeah. you with all the other kids. They Dude, did that I got for me. a story for you on that one. Yeah. Tell me, tell yeah, the story. I remember, I will never forget third grade. <laughs> I was playing basketball and this boy, you're out there. No, I'm just kidding. Um, he like took my basketball card and it said 90 pounds on it. And he went to the front of the class and he was like, you're a liar. He was like, you're not 90 pounds. Jesus. Kids are messed up nowadays. Kids are messed up nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. But But it's okay. It's the nineties. You know, I feel like they don't do that anymore as much. So, but it definitely taught, like, I remember that moment. I was like, I felt like I needed, there needed to be change. Okay. You know, and I know the opposite, like kind of where you're going. I could have easily just retaliated. You could have been like, I'm not fat and ate more Twinkies and yeah. donuts. Oh, and yeah. Stuff, you know? like, yeah. You know, that's because I'm trying to break that down because, you know, it, it, same thing happens in business. Like you let you can't let sometimes people don't take criticism. Yeah, the right way. 100 yeah. percent. But you were able to do it. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to break down so that the audience can duplicate that yeah. process. Yeah. And that's what, you know, that. You know, you saying that in that moment, that's what actually stuck with me in a lot of the situations that I've been in, whether it's my career, whether it's my sports, whether it's with my friends, my family. Um, It is taking what is said to you and finding like, honestly, the positive out of it and what where I can grow out of it. Yeah. Um, That's been you can talk to a lot of people that I know. um, that's it, it truly is something that I feel like in that moment and every single moment that I had to experience where someone's like, yeah, I'm like, cause I don't look at that guy like shady who went up there. Right. I wasn't mad. Kids I mean, are blunt. I was probably yeah. bad, you know, but I, I didn't, I didn't do anything negative about it. You yeah. know, I didn't go and do anything negative and it's like same for business. Right. Or anything that you're doing with your career. It's like, if someone's going to give you this, feedback or they're going to go ahead and show you something that they feel that you can probably do better in. You can, um, improve maybe just your process, whatever it may be. Take something out of that and just figure out what, what the good, good out of it. Yeah. You know, because you can grow. Yeah. There's growth and you know, and the main thing is don't have an ego. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. I mean that you're right. You're always right. But it's about under like seeing where they're really coming from and saying, and comparing it with your beliefs and seeing if maybe there are some truth yep. yeah. to what they are saying, no matter how harsh. Yeah. Sometimes the harshest 
criticisms are the best. Yeah. Because if you got people all say, oh, you look great. You look, yeah. oh my God, you're stunning. Yeah. Mm, doesn't really push you to grow. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Same you always need that fire. Exactly. Yeah. If all the judges said we look good, no one's going to be a pro. Nobody's going to be, yeah, every, yeah. You can't, not everybody can be number one. That's crazy, right? <laughs> we need more people like that. It's like, oh, you're doing good, but you could do better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I love that story. Let's fast forward and I, I want to ask a little bit more, especially for the audience too. Uh, what was it like going into your first show ever? Man, it was, I rushed it, you know. Um, uh, that year when I got into bodybuilding, I honestly just wanted to see my body change. Okay. I didn't know I was going to fall in love with it. Okay. And I can tell you why I fell, fell in love with it in a bit. But that first competition was, I was nervous. I didn't know what you know, I just kept hearing people be like, have fun up there, you know, all this stuff. Um, but my prep was actually cut short because of a few different things. So I knew I was just trying to get as small as possible. Okay. I really wasn't focusing on building muscle at the time. Um, and getting on stage, though, after feeling a little nervous leading up to show day, it felt great. Yeah. Like, I loved being up there because as much as you can talk to any athlete, right? Like if you're up there either on the field or if you're up there as a business person being able to give your speech or doing that, all that leading up to that moment, you're like, damn, I did this, you know? Going into the competition, did you think you were going to take first? No. Oh, okay. I'll be real about that. Yeah. I'll be real because I, I didn't... I didn't think I was going to, no, I didn't, you know, I, I guess I just like, I kind of wanted to just do it for me. And it was more of that type of, um, the competitive side didn't come until later. Oh, okay. Say. That's what I want yeah. to hear. Yeah. Cause so we can touch on that for sure. But the first one I was just kind of like, I want to get on stage. I was like, damn, this is a, I weighed the amount that I weighed in seventh grade. What is that? 128. Oh, wow. Uh, or sorry, sorry. 120, like six twenty seven. Okay. And I hadn't weighed that much since I was seventh grade. And then how much weight did you lose for your first show? Um, I went from one fifty, so twenty five pounds. Oh Sheesh. And you're like you're pretty tall though. Taller yeah, than I'm PJ. Like five, four. PJ's like five two. You're taller than PJ. <laughs> stand up over here. <laughs> Not true, guys. But uh, this is why he didn't want me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Wow, so five four, one twenty eight. Yeah, 127, oh, 127. 126, yeah. That's a lot. That's like, a lot. That's a lot. Like, I'm just putting it for the audience. Uh, the mo the scientific healthy amount is should be two pounds per week. So that's a lot. And that's a lot of uh, discipline and a mm. lot of weeks of training. What, pl what place did you take? <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, okay. So in open, I didn't place. Okay. Like, there was a lot of women in that. And um, in my no true novice, which means that that's your first show. In that division, I took fourth. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Of four like how many five. girls? Five girls? <laughs> 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 hey, you weren't last. Yeah, I got four out of four. You weren't last. That's pretty I good. I wasn't last, yeah. right? I was fourth. And then um, my other one, I can't remember. I think I might have been fourth too out of five. So. Well, pause. Pause before we go in there. I want to ask some more questions. Mm. Um, I know you're saying how once you got on the stage, you felt great. You felt like this is your time. But I know the process must have been treacherous. I know there was a lot of baggage on it. And I want to know what was your thoughts and like the mental battles that you were going through during your prep and, and really how did you overcome them? Yeah, for sure. Um, bodybuilding is a mental sport. It's all yeah. mental. Mm -hmm. The Physical is just, yeah, that's one part, but it's all mental pretty much. And uh, my first show, because I didn't know anything really about, I didn't weigh out my food in powerlifting. So this was my first time having to weigh out my food, mm -hmm. take my meal prep, this like just be so regimented. And then I think mentally there was a lot of points where I was like, I'm not lean enough. Mm. I'm not mm. small enough. I'm not, I'm not going to be, you know, you just doubt yourself a lot, right? It's your... Your mine was like I think twelve week prep. Did which, you ever want to quit? Did I want to quit for this first show? No, I was very hard headed. 
Um, I will say that because my coach wanted me to step down from that show. Really? Yeah, he was being real. That's and a bad coach. And yeah. He, no, he was good. I'm just I'll say yeah. that. I'm just like, man, I just do no. it. get on there. He, when he's when I say step down, he he wanted me to have more time. Oh, okay. Because I was rushing my body, like I was doing so much cardio. Yeah. Oh, okay. Insane, and it's not it's not healthy. Oh. You know. Mm. And so for him, he was like, maybe we should, you know consider another show let's go ahead and take more time so no i didn't want to quit but is bodybuilding like boxing where it shows up as a loss like you know boxing if you get if you get your ass beat it's like 31 knockouts but 31k like you got knocked down you 31 losses it doesn't count that way right no no yeah no. then i would just get on every show i'm gonna get on the show yeah do you let's should do bro you Next should shoot i'm gonna get on the show i'm gonna just go up it. there and just I'm not even going to flex. I'm just going to start throwing jokes. <laughs> Give me the mic. They're going to the kick, kick me on the stage. I, like. no, so it, I mean, like at that point, then if it doesn't count against you, then I would just get on I because it's about like building the confidence. Exactly. And that's, that's what your first show really should be about. Yeah. And that's what people, you know, they really just say, it's your first show. Have fun. Yeah. So I will say in my first show, I didn't want to give up. I was being stubborn. Yeah. You know, I was like, no, I want to just get on stage. I want to get on stage. I was going through a lot that year. So I was like, I want to get on stage. And it really kept my mind. There was a lot of mental, like, it was just more of like people being very judgy about like, why are you doing that? You got to take your meal prep again? Like for real? Like, hmm. and, and not who letting was, that. Who was judging you? Was it PJ? <laughs> actually, we didn't know each other. Oh, we met during my prep. We actually but... knew each other, but I would never say that. Okay. 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 <laughs> we, uh, I'm, who's I'm judging you? Tell me, like, let's break that down because see, I got, I got a saying on that. Who's Honestly, judging? It, it was, it was the people closest to me. Damn it. Damn people. It was. It's always and the people closest to you that's going to put you down. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And you know, but they, they, they hide they, it. They hide it in the sense that, it's oh, I'm, I'm helping you. Exactly. You like, ain't we're looking helping out for me. You. We're looking out. For, yeah. I'm going to tell you right now because those people, you know, now are like, damn, you've been, you should have been bodybuilding a long time ago. And yeah, now that they like see that. that I'm doing good, always, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always the turn. And so my first show, I'll say, like, it was just a lot of learning for me. And I'll say it wasn't, it's my following shows. Yeah. That really were like. Oh. Let's fast forward because I want to talk about that. Right. So your second show, which, at what which show did you were like, I'm going to win this thing? Or like that you had that competitive edge that you wanted to win? Mm, it was my show in Arizona. Was that the fourth, third show? Uh, That was my second show, actually. Okay. So you went in there like, I'm going to win this thing. Because I put in the time, energy, and effort. I felt really good. Yeah. I felt good at where I was at. Um, I, you know, I also started working with a videographer. Yeah. PJ. Uh -huh. And so I was like, I got this. Like, yeah. this is, this is sick. Like, and, you know, I was like, people are seeing that. I'm like, I got this. I'm going to yeah. get on stage and I'm going to do it. Did you win? No. That was probably the most uh, traumatic <laughs> experience really? that I had. Yeah. What place did you go in? Uh, come oh, in? Oh, I didn't because you didn't I place was, no she got dq'd i got dq'd why because you went up there and punched somebody, <laughs> <laughs> somebody. so tell them the story yeah, yeah. It was, it's a really interesting story um how'd you get disqualified it's crazy um so actually at the time i the coach i had you know i got down there got downstairs um and she just told me, like, chill, you know, I was like, should I go backstage? Like, you know, and this show was supposed to be projected as, like, a big show, but we knew it wasn't going to be a big show on the amateur side. It's more of a pro show, right? So that's why I was like, should I go backstage? Like, I didn't, and again, it's my second show, right? So I didn't know how fast things were going to go. And again, you have a coach for a reason, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, hey, should I go backstage? She's like, no, you're good, you're good. So I was at the booth, like, dude, messing with my bra, like, messing with my, just making sure I'm good. And it wasn't until people backstage were like, where's number seven? Where's number seven? We need number seven. And I guess PJ and like my friends heard and they were like, she's right here. They're like she needs to hurry up and get backstage. Like right now, like they're going up right now. And I remember I was like, what? Like I started like putting my heels on. And before you get on stage, you're supposed to pump up. Yeah. You got you're supposed to pump up. You're supposed to yeah. like glaze. You're supposed to like fire. And I didn't get to do any of that. And by the time I got backstage, I was, they were like, you can't go up. I was like, what do you mean? I like flew from California. I like, like I'm here. Like I need to get on stage. She was like, your division went up. They already did their comparisons. You can't go anymore. I like begged the proctor. I was like, please, please, please beg the head judge for me just to go out. Jesus. Because I worked, that was my, I did, because I had to extend. I was originally going to do a show in August. 
but I extended to September because midway we switched my divisions. And so I was like, I've been in my head. I'm like, I've been prepping for 21 weeks. Like, please just let me get on here to sh- show the judge so yeah. I can get feedback because that's important. Yeah, yeah of Again, course. feedback, right? You need that. And so they let me go on stage and I was hoping in finals things would probably get like somewhat fixed and, you know, maybe they'd be like make an exception. Nah, I, I, I didn't place. But what was the plot to us there was my coach told me I placed. You did get to, you did, I don't know if you mentioned, but you did get to. Oh, I did get to go up on during finals, right? Yeah. I did go up during finals. So they gave me a medal and everything. Oh, yeah, it said, no. yeah, it said fourth place, you know, like, I think they just, you know, and, um, at number four though, I was like, done being fourth place. But, um, yeah, I, I asked her, I was like, Do, did I, she was like, you qualified for nationals. Cause that was my goal. That's oh, why I was like, okay. that's my goal. Like when you're, when you're um, competing as an na- uh, amateur, you want to qualify for nationals. So you can go to nationals and try to compete for your pro card. Yeah. So I was like, really? And that's why I had PJ there. He's like doing my whole road it, to national series. Hold on, PJ, like unbiased. Did you think she, would she have gotten first? Honestly, I mean, I'm gonna let her tell oh, that I'll, story I'll because there, there's okay, more okay, context okay. to it. We're gonna get there. Okay, cool. So yeah. she told me that, and um, that's one part. At the end of every show, you go up to the judges and you get your individual feedback from them, right? Because they're writing about you. So we went up to the head judge, and the head judge was like, you know. Um, you looked really great up there. I loved your package. I loved your look, your makeup, everything. You were great. She's like, please be on time next time because if you were on time today, you would have gotten overall. Oh, hell. Dude. <laughs> I, hope oh. You, I hope you didn't pay your, your coach. Oh, I, I thought I did. Yeah, it was crazy. So she, it was crazy. She, she looked really good. Um, it really just sucks because it's like the, the person that is supposed to like lead you to success mm-hmm. who you pay wasn't really there. And I think that was like another lesson that it she is. grabbed from it. What, what, what was it? How did you pick that? this coach? I'm not going to lie. They're a big team. Okay. You know, and I'm not going to mention any names because yeah, they're, they're a great team. And um, I, I love, uh, you know, and I, I really wanted to be on a big team. Yeah. And you know, like what PJ said, that was a lesson for me. That very show, right. was a lesson for me. And I'm sure a lesson in business, a lesson in your career. You have to take, matters into your own hands as well yes you get a coach yes you get a mentor yes you get you go to your parents get someone you you go to someone that you trust and that you are going to learn from but you need to realize there is an the accountability ownership that you need to take over your own path so you know because the thing that i learned from there was i should have been backstage yeah i should have been like hey I'm, i'm backstage i'll meet you backstage because as an athlete that's my responsibility. True. Your coach is there to guide you. Your coach, you know, and even in the coaches that I had after, you know, they're great. They're very attentive. Um, but I still, I was like, I'm going to be backstage. Like, I'll see you backstage. I'll be backstage because, and you learn that through experience, right? Like that's, that's what you learn, but it really, it, it reflects in every aspect of life. Yeah. You know, a coach can only do so much. Exactly. End of the day, you know, I like that you didn't play victim. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think it was, I mean, to be honest, that whole day was, <laughs> was nuts. You know, to think about it, you have to go in the morning and you do your first prejudging show, right? And then to hear that you're getting, you're basically like DQ'd. Yeah. You don't get to go up there and then still go to finals and just see what happens to like have that, to have that real like tenacity and just yeah. pull through like when everything, your back's against the wall. Um, that was like, probably like one of the best things that you know i witnessed um and i thought like you can't take that back for anything no. like that probably that moment should reflect into like you said all aspects of your life right whether it's like your business endeavors this and that you know it just proves like when my back's t- like up against the wall like i could still like move forward yeah you know um so yeah thanks for sharing that i, I want to ask i want to ask like this what is like the the difference right between your first show if there is any, what's the difference between your first show and your second show? Because you did look completely different. I did. Um, you had a different mindset. Obviously, you're competitive now. And I think Brian wants to know, too. So what yeah. what is different from, you know, Christiana first show to Christiana second show? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And um, 
it's my favorite part about when I talk about my sport and why I'm in my sport is because um, they actually rolled out the division, the wellness division in 2020. So when I, my first show was in 2019 and um, they rolled it out in 2020. And so when I was prepping in 2021, I prepped in 2020, but didn't get to go because of the pandemic and everything. And then 2021 prep, I was still prepping for bikini. And it wasn't until midway when my coach and I had like a posing session because I've been asking her, I was like, can I do wellness? So just a little background with wellness, the difference between all the divisions is it's the only division where you're asymmetrical, where they want you to be as conditioned as a a bikini competitor, but they want you to be very dominant in your glutes, hamstrings, and quads. Mm. So they want, you know... Lower half definitely needs to dominate the top. Like a horse. Like a horse. <laughs> Straight <laughs> like, up horse. Like, and if they're, it's crazy. Like, it's yeah. crazy to watch that division. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but I love it. And that's that's why, like, when I, when I got switched into this division, because she saw my quads, she was like, girl, you got quads. I was like, dude, I've been trying to tell you. Like, I, you know, and when we switched and all of that, like, my training, my training came back to, like, my powerlifting days where I can lift heavier. Yes, I was still doing cardio, but, like, my training just felt so much more at home okay and i didn't feel anxious anymore where i was like i'm not gonna be small oh I'm not okay. be small enough you know to be in bikini i'm like you know i i know i know my body and i know it just felt so much more at home and then you know that's where i really felt like i'm gonna be competitive yeah. like this is this is my division this is where i know i'm gonna I'm going to kick my ass at the gym even harder because I'm going to grow in this, you know? It seems like it was very, like, the competitive Mm. fire came out of just pure passion. Yeah. Did you make it to the national? Are you, are you, you, what's the next show? I'm qualified for nationals, yeah. You are. So now the next one, if you win, you get your pro card. Yes. That would be, manifest that right now. When's your next show? Uh, We don't have a show date yet. Okay. So um, I do have new coaches and I really love how they're doing it right now where they're really just trying to get to know how my body works and really make sure that, you know, everything is working right before we get into a prep. But we're targeting for early June, um, early summer to start prepping and then maybe uh, a local show um, later on in the year in the national. So, but as competitive as I am now and getting to accomplish what I've wanted, which is qualifying for nationals. Yeah. I have also learned to appreciate to slow down. And because like I said, in my first show, I, I rushed myself. I was yeah. like, I just want to get up there. Yeah. Um, and I will give PJ props because he helps me um, a lot in giving me that insight where he's like, I get it. I get you want to get back on stage again, but you got to be strategic in it, right? There's business, your sport, your career, whichever. Um, with your plan, right? Because I can keep going to shows. I can keep getting lean every single time. But if I keep coming up, coming back and showing up the same look every single time, am I going to win? Probably not. It's about taking one step back mm-hmm. to go two to three steps forward. Yep. And I think you said that in a podcast. I remember. It did. And or it, a you TikTok. Know, it keeps coming back yeah. because honestly, it, it's the same in bodybuilding. It's the same in business. Mm-hmm. It is. It's the same when you want to make massive growth that sometimes yeah. when with big growth comes taking a step back mm-hmm. to go pew, like yep. a slingshot. For sure. For sure. I think that's, you know, to, to tie it back in business, right? You know, what she was essentially saying that I was trying to talk her out of is she was just eager to go to the show and not grow more muscle. Yeah. Right. She just wanted to go to the show, like have a little bit, like a month, two off and then go. And like, if you know anything about bodybuilding, that's not enough to completely change like yeah. your muscle right and that's like in business say like you want to launch a product business all right you do the when business. it comes you do to the business. business guys little numbers become big numbers but sometimes if you're only stacking little numbers but you're just trying to constantly invest your thousand bucks how big of a return can you get if you're only investing a thousand sometimes you got to stack away sit back eat crap don't buy that watch don't buy that car but i think we'll wrap it up here guys thank you for cool. having me guys thanks so Winners. much guys This is a fire episode. (laughs) We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. 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 Bye.